Hello, Internet, and welcome to AOS, uh, our fifth edition Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, whatever time it is for Barry right now. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Spectacular. I am Sean. I am not the DM of this game, but I'm going to go ahead and do our announcements for. Uh, Barry gets underway with whatever shenanigans he has planned for us today. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up over the next week here at GGK uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, our next stream after this one, um, if you like what you see here today, uh, we will have on Thursday uh, the premiere episode of Elegant Suffering, our good society uh, story that we are going to be uh, telling that is going to be at eight o'clock Eastern time. Um, a lot of familiar faces. I'll be there. Svana and Alex will be there. Uh, it's going to be run by Greek Sid, uh, who is, uh, if you might have seen her on Slang 101. Um, and we're all very excited to see this game. Uh, so come and join us at 8. Uh, next stream after that will be on Saturday, which will be Saturday Night's Thunderball, uh, which, thank you, uh, which I run uh, every week. Um, that's going to be at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, the team is currently in their uh, quarterfinal matchup. Things are going pretty well for them right now. We'll see how the game turns out um, and see whether they're able to uh, clinch the championship. So definitely a good time to join us. It's super non-story uh, based. You can jump in any time and just enjoy the fun and the action and all that good stuff. Uh, like I said, it's 3 o'clock every Saturday. Um, on Sunday this week, we will have our next installment of Slang 101, as I mentioned before. Uh, that's 4 o'clock eastern time um that is uh monster of the week savannah runs it and we're currently fighting vampires in the nude i don't need to say anything more than that well not all uh, of you well are the two vampires of nude are the players who, who's nude in two this of scenario the, two of the players are nude well two uh, of the characters and, are nude <laughs> Yes. No, no, no. I'm going to be in character. No, no, we're not going to do that. I don't want to get banned from Twitch. Imagine I, uh, two... the subscriber count. Yeah, right. Think about it. As we transition to fans only for all of our streaming in the future. Uh... <laughs> you mean only fans? Whatever. Whatever. Same thing. Anyway, uh, we have, uh, let me think. Uh I think that's it until next Tuesday, where we'll be back for this. Um, oh, join us on Friday this week. Won't be here, but we'll probably be hosting it here over on Counter Roleplay. Um, Savannah is going to be running uh, her very first session of a new Masks campaign uh, heroes next door uh definitely go over to a few of us retweeted it uh but the promo for it is awesome uh just went out like yesterday uh, and it looks really cool uh so fans be running it i'm gonna be playing in it lb's gonna be playing in it um and it's gonna be great uh that's gonna be at three o'clock on three o'clock eastern on friday uh and that's every week um for the next six weeks i think that's it I miss anything? No? All right, cool. Uh, then I'll kick things over to David for the recap. Yeah. All right. So last time we started off uh, in some caves underneath Emberwell and uh, fighting a giant fire elemental. We kind of wanted to run away. It didn't work out too great for us. Not everyone could get away. So we managed to kill the thing. Uh, kind of skin of our teeth <laughs> for a couple of us. And uh, yeah, got out of there, decided to head on down to, oh, I don't have a map. Uh, what's yeah. the city? Okay, yeah. With the, the meteorite, check out what's going on with that. Uh, along the way, we communicated a bit with Finn about what we wanted to do with hiring guards and whatnot via Sending Stones. Uh, met a guy who tried to scam us with some magic fishing rods that were not so magic. Uh, decided not to kill him for his, his transgressions. And yeah, made it to this city. Uh, met a, a little sorcerer kid, uh, Leo, who was missing his shadow 
puppy who had over the past couple of days gotten really big and was a big old shadow wolf and had run off into what we found to be a, a, a pretty spooky house. We were thinking maybe it's haunted so far. We've just fought some weasels. Um, and, and yeah, we, we left off uh, heading into the basement. So as you descend the stairs, you notice there are just um, wooden bottle racks lining both the north and western wall. Uh, there don't appear to be any intact bottles in these racks, unfortunately. Um, but there are a lot sh of shattered bottles all across the floor. Um, at the foot of the stairs, you notice there are two large metal storage bins that appear to be empty. And in the center of the room lies a human corpse clad in plate mail. A long sword lies by the right side, and a large shield covers its leg. And you did discover the tracks, so you notice that they continue down to the southern wall, and like through, they just seem to stop at a bit of the wall. Sir, are you okay there? Uh, I'll go over and kind of poke it with his quarter staff. Um, it's very soft, like it's been there for a few weeks. All right. So from the smell, we knew this guy was was very dead. That and uh, back the quarter stuff went in further than it should have. <laughs> do any of you want any of this stuff, or should we do anything about this, or just continue following the tracks? I mean, I don't know what we would do. I'm sorry, because I was still getting set up. What did he have on? What, what did they have on them? Long sword shield. Long sword shield. Um, no, none of that really helps me all that much. Well, maybe we can gather it on our way out, sell it for some extra coin, but just, just leave it as is for now. Right. So, just keep on going down the dingy, probably haunted hallway then. Yep. Yep. All right. You know, I, I think I'm going to pick up this longsword just in case this is like a, like a zombie situation happens. I don't want zombie with a longsword after us. Right. So, uh... <laughs> From behind. That's, that's a good idea. Um, or we could just like set the body on fire or something. I mean, I don't recommend it in an enclosed space. Ah, uh, fair. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't want to send the, the house up in flames. Do you want me to sneak on ahead, see what's up there? That'd be good. I'll do that then. I think we just assumed you were offering... You take the sword, did you run the body, or you just like, let's just leave it. So Velios is taking the sword? Uh, yeah, I'm taking the sword. I'll, I'll strap it on. Okay, as you grab the sword. Fuck. You, knew it. <laughs> you go to remove his right hand from the hilt of the sword, and as you do that, a swarm of grubs just in case your hand and they fight you. Did you have Oh that sucked. That was a natural twenty for that bite attack. Thank you, die. From rolling nothing higher than a ten pregame. So you take 
three piercing damage. And I'm, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, can I get like a nature or survival check from everyone? I'm good at nature. Even roll for the Leo. That is a 16 survival. 24 nature. 10. 18 nature. Okay, everyone but curiosity would have heard of these grubs. Um, they are called rock grubs, and you would know that if they, when they bite you, they start burrowing in, and unless you burn them within six seconds conveniently, uh, they can only be removed from a um, something that removes diseases. And if you die from them, you die from them eating your heart. So are are we doing initiative or can we can we act as we want? You can act as you want. Um imagine all the guys start yelling at curiosity to burn a Velios. Burn it. <laughs> Get on with fire. I yeah, I think my hand's out. So I will firebolt <laughs> his hand. I don't know. Okay. Um, firebolt his hand. It, it's only one fire damage to kill the thing. But, um, then I believe everyone else just going to like kill the bugs that are left. Yeah, work on yeah. squashing them, making sure. Shooting them with stuff so they don't get close and try and bite. Yeah. Simple, simple solution. Next so time, do I don't only take scream. one? Next time, do not <laughs> scream at me at once. Sorry. Um, just didn't want it to burrow into him and start, you know, delete his, his heart. heart. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Delete his heart. The rot grubs, they'll, they'll burrow into your arms and then you, Yeah, okay. You can yeah. stop now. Not really in my it's area. It's nasty. Yeah, I just commented one of the Western <laughs> continent. <laughs> one of our servants died from it a few years ago. Oof, that was not that was not a pretty sight. Feel free to stop anytime. Do you not have rot grubs where you're from? No. Hmm. Lucky. Maybe we should travel there next. Yeah. You have hornets that cook their prey game. alive with their body heat. Are they giant hornets or like, is, you know, is it a they little prey or? Mm, they're very small, but when there's a lot of them, they sort of surround it and vibrate their bodies very fast and it. They can cook you alive. So, which is also very scary. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'd want to have either of those things happen. We should keep going though, but just you know, don't touch any more bodies. Well at least it probably isn't gonna be a zombie then. I don't imagine the grubs would have left it anything to work with. No, technically <laughs> like most undead don't need heartbeats or anything like that to survive, so hmm. we should go out of oh, this particular room. Does that mean we gotta worry about if we're fighting a zombie, it might have rot grubs in it? And Well, it does now. <laughs> That's definitely a possibility. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing the ones in Freeville didn't happen. I know. Please lower your voice, because if the gods hear you, things are going to start <laughs> happening. <laughs> the DM will remember that. <laughs> I would not want to be inside your brain for even a moment. <laughs> so. Even more imperative for me to, you know, sneak ahead and make sure there aren't a bunch of undead infested with rot grubs up there. Just don't touch them. I have no intention of it. Uh, and I will, I will sneak on down, sneak on down the road. Sneak on down. Uh. 
it's only 10 feet from the body where the secret door is. So, like, like you sneak on down the road, you just walk a bit and, like, hey, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just want to, like, quietly peek around the corner and make sure there aren't, like, 20 zombies now, like, shuffling towards us down the hall or in the room. Okay. Can I get a stealth check and then a sleight of hand check? like how quietly you get this door open stealth is a 20 sleight of hand is a 10 i rolled much worse on the sleight of hand roll (laughs) um you're very quiet um the door you seem to avoid every bit of broken glass there's no crunching sound and then the door's a little bit harder to push open than you thought it would be. And so you kind of barge it a little bit and it suddenly opens but scrapes along the ground. And in a very quiet room, that's very loud. Shut you. You don't see anyone in the next room. The next room is quite large. It looks to be a barracks of some type. Uh, there are like 12 beds set up. There's a big, like, long table where clearly there'd be meals had. There's very makeshift kitchen just to your right as you enter. Um, it's like there's more stairs leading up which from their direction would be the wing of the house you didn't check. And then there are a couple of rooms to your left. And the footprints you have been following head to the right and lead to yet another wall. Just peer back down the 10 feet to where everyone else is at. It says, of course, seems clear. Um, Come on. And uh, I will... I, I'm not the one that should be inspecting the wall. I just point and say, looks like they went that way. I'll take a look. Take a look. Um, You can see the outline of where the door would be. And like all the other ones, you've gathered how to open it properly. So you could easily just get it clicked open. Ta-da. Oh, that was easy. Hmm. Good job. This is like the third one. We should put some of these in our like manor house in Pretty Vale. We well, just doors. did no real doors. It's just like a big hallway just and just all, all secret walls. doors. Can you imagine anyone trying to rob us? They'd be terrified. I mean, I think that sounds fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm all for it. We could have doors. some fake doors that you open up and it's just like a bomb in there or something, you know? Oh, well, right. bomb? <laughs> Not in our home. <laughs> Maybe Again, just I... like a like a cardboard like ghost pop up and goes like bah and scares <laughs> people or something. That would be funny. What what's going on up here, <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be a big bomb, right? Like, just a small... (laughs) I guess in a brainstorming session, there are no bad ideas. Like, like the size of a small fruit or something. Like, like the size of, like, a... I don't know, like a grape or, like, a cherry or something. Just something that, you know, if you open up the fake door, you know, you die from an explosion. Like, not structural damage to our house. We're going to have a hard time uh, uh, hiring uh, cleaning staff if we're going to start putting murder doors throughout the house. Well, I think we're also going to have a hard time creating a bomb that is large enough to kill a person who encounters it, but small enough that it won't cause any structural damage. Is the bomb going to be bigger or smaller than a bread box? (laughs) Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not an engineer. I don't make these things. All right, I say we talk to that gnome. Mm. That, uh... Right. Um, The gnome. 
just disintegration rate trap. So it's like ash when they die. God. <laughs> and we just sweep it up. Can we make a fantasy Roomba to uh... speaking of rumors? I think we have stats for that, don't we, Dave? Yeah, we got the dire Roomba for my Monday. I find a dire Roomba. Uh... Okay. The time when the god listens to your joke idea and is like, yes. <laughs> A small machine that will sweep things up on its own. <laughs> mm. Go through the secret door. You go through the secret door when there's rooms to explore here? Uh, I will pop over to those rooms and see what's inside of them. Okay. I'll help. Just real quick. Just real quick. Um, one door opens up to a room that just seems to be empty. And the other door you can see has been damaged and is bent out towards you as if something's tried breaking it down from the other side. But it's still closed. Yes. Okay. So whatever it is might not have escaped yet. I just go up to the door and I just like knock on it a little. <laughs> you knock on the door, okay. Um, and I step back, like I, I, I jump, I sprint back. You sprint back. Like a good okay. 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> As like I'm Dean Dong ditching the door. <laughs> knock, knock, run. And as you get your 15 feet away, you start hearing some noise in that room. And then you all start hearing some loud thuds against this door, trying to break it down. And then it finally gives way. And there are... Now what are the odds of that? I just look around everyone. It's been <laughs> close all this time, and now it's going to get out. With you, incredibly high. <laughs> there are a few skeletons just ready to attack. So we are going to need an initiative roll for everyone. Someone had skeletons in their closet. Ha. Huh. Uh, can you give us tokens, please? Uh, I will not be able to put myself on the initiative track, so I will tell you what mode I roll. Um. All good, and to represent the skeletons, I am just going to put in... Where is our zombie friend? Ooh. That's not great initiative. Roll 20 did so well. I did not do that well. I oh know it's the grandpa zombies. They're representing the skeletons. There's five of them. Just because the tokens are different sizes don't mean anything. Just means one token was annoying. Uh, in order. What did you end up getting, Nicole? Uh, 10. We have such a close spread. Oh my god. You guys rolled amazing. Where is this? Okay. Skeleton. Did better than some, but not as good as others. Mm -hmm. 
And what's with these quick skeletons? I've been waiting for the person who keeps knocking on their door and running. They're like, just we'll catch him this time. Just kept holding their actions, waiting for the door to break. <laughs> These damn kids. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the skeletons starts shambling towards all of you. Um, and then we'll probably reach Fallen because he's within 15 feet. And sure. they swing their short sword at you because why not? And does a six hit? <laughs> Let me check now. Um, look, they 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 may be quick, but they're not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The next one will crit on me. Uh, the next one decides to shoot a arrow at you because. You got to diversify, and you you joke that it crit, and it does. Uh, that's a twenty. Ouch. Don't worry, that is only six piercing damage. Okay. And that. Uh, oh shit! I got track my hit points somewhere. Okay. And it's turn, and now it's your turn. That's how slow everything else is. <laughs> Out Wait. of the five zombies and you're... Oh, I didn't roll for Leo. It's my turn? Yeah, so... I rolled the highest with a 10? We rolled an 8, a 9, a 9, and a 10. For yeah. Guys! <laughs> uh, Leo was meant to go before everything, but I'll just say he was... You hear a sound of, like, a fireball being cast in the previous room, and Leo just walks out and is like, no zombie coming from that direction. <laughs> just looking out, Leo. <laughs> just walks out, dust in his hair. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to do the thing, the only thing I can do. I just hand crossbows, John Woo style. Just going to start shooting at the zombie right in front of me, or skeleton right in front of me. Post zombie. Pre zombie? Ex zombie. Skeleton. Uh, okay. Uh, first attack is a 28. That hits. Second. Oh, is another 28. That hits. Uh, total of 17 points of piercing damage. I'm sure that it's not great. Skeleton is down. Oh shit. Okay. Uh that that they're bones. Yeah. <laughs> I expect too much from them. So just like it just I just take both, like cock them back, and then just like straight into the rib cage and just blast this skeleton to pieces. Uh and then I run back to hide near my muscle wizard. And that's my turn. Okay, next on the turn order is everyone's favorite Dragon Ball Z character. So, <laughs> so you had said there was a skeleton that shot uh, shot at him with a bow. How many of them are there? Uh, with bows? You're looking at two ranged, and now there are two melee. Okay. Um, and they're still kind of in this room, so you got to go through a door or stand in a doorway. Yeah, so I would have to go past the melees to get to the ranged. Yeah. But what if I just tried to sunbolt them from here? Um. Then yeah, you can just try and sunbolt them from there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll go with that. So I'll try and sunbolt the one that shot at Fallen first. Okay. Um, is G only just realizing that Saul is a DBZ character? He says Dragon Saul Z. Yeah. Well, G, that pun got me a natural one, <laughs> so that's your fault. Um, I'm kidding. But I will go ahead and spend a key point to shoot two more as a bonus action. A Dragon Saul Z. Um, keep me just a 13 hit. Uh, 13, I believe, does hit. Okay. Uh, let me see if that downs that one somehow. 
with five radiant damage. Five radiant does not damn that one. So then the second bolt will go for that same one. Okay. Yeah, I cannot roll. That's a nine. That's not hit. Okay. Uh, but Saul will go ahead and move up so that uh, if they come out of the room, they're going to have to go past him, basically trying to draw their attention. Oh, good. Uh, next. It's I'm all good. Yep. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so one's been damaged, yeah? Yes. All right. I think I will just peek around uh, where this is going on and use a charge from my wand of magic missiles and send three missiles at this dude who's been damaged. Okay. Right. So what is that? So, uh, so ten force damage. The three missiles hit the skeleton, and where it hits, just turns to like bone meal, and just crumbles to the ground. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, nope. Okay, another grandpa down. Curiosity. Um, I'm going to back up just a little bit and uh, shoot a firebolt at one of them. Okay. Fifteen. That hits. Are we hitting a melee or a range? Um, one of the ranged ones. Okay. That's eight fire damage eight fire damage to the last range zombie it is still standing but it looks pretty beat up okay um next on the turn order uh the last few oh two zombies left um to move i think i may have killed one which hadn't moved yet that's cool. Um, we'll have just because I know he's been waiting for it to happen. The ranged zombie will attack Dragon Soul C because he really wants to try and catch an arrow. Okay, we'll see. So we've got good chances of this happening. That is a 17 to hit. That misses. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, he even rolled like a 13. I'm like, this stands a chance. If I didn't have the braces of defense, that would have hit. Uh, okay, you, you're ready to catch the arrow and it just misses you and you're like, son of a bitch. I'm over here. This Hello. whole campaign is going to be sold trying to get hit by an arrow, but everyone keeps missing in with it. And one of the sword-wielding zombies will walk out and try and hit you. And that one rolls 23. That'll hit. Uh, that is seven piercing damage with its short sword as it walks out, trips a bit, and thrusts towards you. Kind of a big ouch, but I got it. Uh, Leo will attack that one with firebolt because that seems to work on the undead that will hit and I'm pretty certain uh, the zombie which hits you gets blown to pieces then next is the other Melee zombie which walks out and tries to swing at you, so because you're there, it rolled one, so nothing. And then Fallen. Okay. How many are left right now? One range, one melee. 
All right, I'll go for the ranged one. Uh, two more bolts. That's a 24 and a 13. Both hit. All right. Uh, that's 18 points of piercing damage. Completely destroyed. Just lock and load, baby. Load. Okay. So there's just that one in front of you which tried hitting you, but did miserably. Okay. I'm gonna whack it two-handed quarter staff swing. Uh it's 17 to hit. Hit. Uh nine bludgeoning damage. Nine bludgeoning you do more damage than you thought as the force of the bludgeoning reverberates throughout their bones, just cracking as it travels along. And this one just cartoon style. Everything below from where you hit kind of just disappears and then its head just falls. Encounter Dante. All right. That went pretty well. well what were the odds that it was... It was going to just break down. They were going to be able to break down that door like at that exact moment. So you're right. Uh, stings a little bit, but uh, I think I'll be okay. Maybe I'll take one of our little potions. Don't want to use up too many of your spells, Avelios. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, how's everyone feeling? I'm a little, you know, but I've, I would would be kind of a waste to use any healing on me right now. I'm fine. I just got scratched up by that one, so I should be okay. I'm healthy. Oh, I forgot you were here, Leo. I All right. Kill. So, I killed you. Mean. You did no, so it was good. good. It was, it was a good yeah. shot. You, you know, you don't got to worry about it. He was already dead. You know, just doing the God's yeah. work. I know he's. He forgot I was here after I had clearly. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a joke. I remembered you're here. That was a good shot. He's just been joke. very quiet. Plus, I don't have um, my notebook in front of me, so I can't see half of you right now. Anyway, uh, I can't remember anyone's name right now. So, good job, small boy. You're a bully. <laughs> I literally won't remember anyone's. I cannot. I will not remember a single NPC's name because I don't have the list of right now. I was so relying on that. We got five points of healing back from the potion. I rolled a one and a two. Oof. And um, okay. So now there's a room you can explore where the zombies came from. Take a peek. Take a peek. This room looks very much like a wizard's study room. Move. I'm no. pushing Fallen out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> Move. Right. Okay, so in this room, <laughs> I was like, get out of my way. <laughs> um, you notice... There is a bag. So there's like a little bag rack with some bags hanging up. There's some papers open up over the desk. On top of the papers are two like amulets, but they're kind of matching. Do you know like those little necklaces you can get that have the little thing which together they make an image so it's like here friend you have That's this, on, this one. there's one of those but it's in the shape of like the yin yang symbol huh. um i'm assuming you haven't looking at the paperwork mm -hmm. uh this paperwork just talks about um there's a few things most of these are kind of theories which the 
world hasn't proven to be true or false yet. So ones like uh, the Gravity. Phantom of Youth must be out there. Gravity. Uh, you would know on your eastern continent, gravity's been proven because they're all technology side. Like they're all, it's true. <laughs> this side's like, why is everything falling? <laughs> God. Magic. Um, Why did they say that? And then here? there's like the Philosopher's Stone, um, like being able to turn anything into another material. And then the one which has the necklaces above it, it seems to be more plausible. You see, the notes seem to be written about the items on top where it's. It shares the benefits of spells cast on someone. So if you're wearing one and someone's wearing the other one, it like for an example, it has like tested this out. I healed myself. The other person also got healed. Huh. The other person was going to get hit. I cast shield. The shield went up on them as well, deflected the damage. Fascinating. And take them. You take them. Um, is everyone else walking into this room? What's everyone else doing? I'm going into the seemingly empty room because this is a nerd room and I want <laughs> nothing to do with it. I guess you want nothing to do with my fancy best friend necklace either. I don't know it's there. It's just books and stuff. I don't care about books. <laughs> Saul's going to keep an eye on Avelios and also look around the room. <laughs> okay, um, seemingly empty room. You see there's like a tatty, lumpy, terrible mattress on the ground in the corner. I think that's my dog, but I don't care. Um, it looks like it's a prison cell, to be honest. <laughs> If someone's been bad, or if they, or if they don't want to be kidnapped, they'd be put in this room. Gonna go poke the mattress with my quarter staff. Just like flip it over. There's no bugs. There's no rodents. <laughs> it's just a lumpy, terrible mattress. It's probably got fleas or lice in it, but it's nothing which can like burrow into your skin and kill you. Yeah. I'm gonna go stomp on the ground around where the mattress was to see if there's any, someone had a secret, like they dug up a floorboard or something like that. A secret stash. You're just stomping. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> Nothing in this room. Right, I'll begrudgingly go into the wizard's room. I think I found <laughs> something. Come on, look at this. Who are you talking to? Whoever's there. I think I was the only one okay. uh, over there with the, still there? Went to the Or no one if everyone left. <laughs> No, 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 no. Over. <laughs> no yeah, I there. would be in that if they went to the other room. I would have stayed here to keep an eye on you. These are kind of right next to each other, so like one door would be like straight on, and that's the wizard room, and then just to the left of that door is where this other room was. Bowden, come have a look at this. What am I looking at? Uh, well, I think if these notes are correct, and I will check, um, a pretty powerful magical artifacts for our purposes anyway that sounds good what's it do uh well according to who have other this is like a name on these notes that somebody like sign their work um, from the desk of dictated not read. no <laughs> like they don't yeah. want to put their names <laughs> hmm um, well, if the whoever's work this is is legitimate, um, apparently these amulets have some, some sort of ability to mirror magical effects. Oh. 
So like, if I'm wearing one, you're wearing one. There is some sort of magical effect placed on me, it would be placed on you also. That sounds pretty good. Hmm. Does it take any more, like, magical energy on your part to, like, sustain it? I don't think so. Sounds like it'd be really useful, then. What's the I'm catch? Gonna, I'm gonna identify them just in case. You identify, and it's as pretty much what was worded in that thing. Um, magical effects cast on one, benefits the other. Doesn't take any extra spell slots. It's more... It's, it's a way for you to assist someone in the front line. Like, it costs you your reaction, which means if you get hit later, you can't react to save yourself, but you can help someone who can't benefit from spell casting themselves because either they're not magically inclined or they're a ragey, angry boy. So it's like if if uh, Curiosity is wearing it, she can cast shield on someone else from a distance. It doesn't. It doesn't give them. She both casts shield. on herself, and it does herself and the other person. Oh, both at the same time. Okay, she, that's what if, I was thinking. Um, Avelios heals. Say like you, you and Curiosity would both get healed, whatever amount you get healed. So is it any magic? So like, if someone got hit by a disintegrate, would the other person also get disintegrated? Because that could be a pretty big <laughs> downside. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like that's mentioned in the test subjects. So that's so something you would have to try out. <laughs> yeah, not as far as I can tell. Be worth looking into, though. I, I don't see any reason not to take it. Well, no, I'm going to hang on to them. I just... Oh, right. Test it out later, you know, just to be safe, because, like Avelius pointed out, don't want someone to get blasted by something and two people get I burned. I don't think that's the intention of the item, but... Make sure it doesn't do that, but maybe before we rest for the evening... Just in case. All right. I'll take them. I'm going to take the notes, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so you just leave in that room. Checking anything else in that room. Is there anything I mean... else of interest? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say it's really weird to have your office like right next door to your prison cell. I gotta imagine the prison cell, whoever's in there is gonna be, you know, yelling and stuff. Seems like it'd be hard to concentrate. Well, it's possible if they were using human subjects. You want easy access to them. Do we think whoever might have been doing this experimentation might still be around, though? Maybe this is the footprints we're following. Maybe. Look at them. Why would they have left a bunch of skeletons in their room? Maybe. I mean, they were kind of locked inside. Maybe there was an experiment gone wrong. They locked the door, ran away. It was really just for safety. Undead aren't easily controlled. I mean, I gotta imagine someone who can make amulets like you were describing could take on a couple of skeletons. It's also possible he didn't make it. I mean, he might have. He might have found it and been testing it. Oh yeah, that's a good. I that's a good thought. I hadn't thought of that. Either way, we should yeah. find whoever we're following. We should follow the yeah. And we gotta look for the pot too. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen any dog tracks yet. So Negative. Okay, so the tracks aren't dog-like. They're person Humanoid. tracks. I don't know that a creature made out of shadow leaves tracks. Fair point. Well, let's follow the secret door then and see what happens next. 
Okay, as you roll walking out of the wizard's study room and heading towards the secret door, uh, Leo's the last one to leave that room, and when he looks into that empty room, you hear him yell out his dog's name, Darts, and then runs in there. Not and as he enters, the door slams shut behind him. And you just hear yelling and screaming. Shit. Around the door frame, you're you're hearing the sounds of like a fireball go off. You're seeing different lights flash. The door's shaking. It sounds like something. There's a big fight going on in that small 20 by 15 foot room. Can I try to like unlock the door? You can try. Um, you go up to the door. There's nowhere for a lock itself. Uh, looks like it was like a padlock which kept it shut. Mm -hmm. But it should just open. But it's not okay. budging. Anything? No, I don't. I don't even know how to begin to open this. It might be something magical. Move. I kick it really hard. You kick it really hard. Um. For those of you that are magically inclined, um, normally, you know, magic has an essence of itself and you can kind of feel it when you use it. Right now, you're feeling a lot of it emanating from this room. Um, as you go to kick the door, you get knocked back 10 feet. That seemed wrong. Are you all right? I'm fine. Uh, shit. I've I, blasting the door down. A I'm going to start shooting some sun bolts at it. You start shooting sun bolts at it. The door starts cracking where you're hitting, and you can start to see through it all, through the cracks. And what you see is there's this rift which has opened up, like a tear in reality and all you see is leo looking through the door at you guys screaming at whatever has grabbed him and he's got shackles around his wrist and he's just dragged through as the rift closes and then everything calms down can we open the door now yep everything's back to normal but there's no kid You did see a figure through the rift. Um, can I get a history check from everyone? It's an 11. 20. Um, 23. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. Um, let's see. The 11 and no for soul. 14 for uh, Fallen. You can't place it, but you have seen that person before. But you can't place okay. where. Uh, the 20 for Avelios. Um, You've seen him at some events with your family, but you also didn't really care because why should you? Um, it doesn't involve you. Who really cares about anyone else? And curiosity, you would have seen this person while you were in town at Parathor, but you don't know who they are specifically. Did you see that? I, I felt like I recognized him, but I didn't. I don't know who they were. I I seen him at a few parties that my parents threw, but I I don't know who he is. I saw them in Carathor. Hmm. Never seen them in my life. Damn did it. they? What did they look like again? I never actually described them. Um. Okay. 
They are like picture Malfoy's father, Lucius. Mm -hmm. Pretty much like that. It's got that shit eating grin, which you just want to hit. Um. <laughs> okay. So human looking. Uh, you Elven. couldn't see if they had like the elvish ears. But generally, like humanoid, like yeah, okay. humanoid, nicely dressed, um, gathering from everyone's point of view, and like how they've remembered them, something to do with nobility or a noble themselves, um, probably based in Carathor. Huh. You can remove your little meat shield from the field. Be gone. Should have appreciated him, I guess. Is there anything left in the room? Uh, where there the portal are was? Scorch marks on the roof and ground where it was at. Um, you see, you know, sometimes when lightning strikes, it's got the little marks of where the lightning's gone through the ground. That's on the roof and ground. Uh, the walls themselves are quite burnt and damaged, probably from Leo's fireball. And all the other spells he just cast off in quick succession to try and prevent whatever happened happening. And we didn't hear Leo say anything like that they recognized this person or that. Like... Uh, you heard him yell out his dog's name, ran in through the door, it shot, and then you just heard like screaming and yelling of him trying to fight something off of him. And then okay. just you saw him get yoinked through the rift while attached to shackles okay damn it well, folk um is there anything you could do here like reopen the portal or something like that so we can follow them through not if i don't know the origin it's a, it's a, a bit beyond me magically anyway but there's no it's not like the teleportation circles, no sigils, no anything. It's something that a caster just does and then closes. <sighs> All right. I mean, I guess we just have to keep following the tracks then and hope that it leads us to whoever might be able to give us some answers here. Did we see into the other side of the portal at all? Like, did it look like a room or? Um, it looked there were there did seem to be a couple of undead in like the back background walking around it looked like a just like a dark open plane may not necessarily be on this plane of existence I fucked out that's not my dog so I can't get up it I can't hear it anyway. Oh. I mean, you do have to take into account that <clears throat> not only may he not be in the house anymore, he might not be here. All right. Well, like I said, we'll just, we have to hope that whoever is in, still in this house or there might be something here that might give us some answers, figure out whether that was even connected to the house or somebody just grabbed him for no reason. We all recognize this person then maybe they've been following us i mean he saw his dog it's connected right. somewhere he did yeah i mean if if we assume whoever this is did something with the dog to make the dog come here it means he needed leo to be here mm -hmm. so maybe there's a way to get there on our own in this house somewhere no we're going to find out Let's go. All right. Head through the secret door, which leads to another set of stairs going further down. So as you're heading down these stairs, they go, unlike the others, which were clearly wooden and built as stairs, these seems to be dug through stone and shaped 
into the rock themselves. Someone Minecrafted these stairs. They built a, a cross and <laughs> the matrix there was like, like two, so you don't hit your head every time you step on them. Does it seem like there might be a structure that's older than the house itself? Um, you know, judging just... by the positioning of where the church was on the cliff, it looks like they've dug into the cliff side. Gotcha. And it's not long before you see it open up into a like caverns. Gotcha. So as you get to the bottom of the stairs, you notice there is a path which leads off to your left and it's always gradually going down and then you can see it as it slightly curves off to the right and seems to continue on. Can I get a marching order? Um, I mean, I'll go first so I can be a little bit ahead of the group. All right, how far in front? Not far, like 15 feet or so, just enough that I can be quiet and give us a fair warning in case there's something ahead of us. Also realizing that I'm not the most observant, so I don't want to be totally out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to be there in case there's any trap flows. Yeah, basically. I'm just trying to remember what we had done in terms of a light source before, if I can see it all in here. Um, there would be torches along the pathway. Okay. And so that doesn't necessarily matter where I am. I'm not going to be producing a light source and giving us away. So I would probably be then at the front after Fallen, you know, giving him his space, but And then the other two. I'll be in the back. Sorry. Yeah. Be in, be in the middle, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Uh, if everyone's trying to be stealthy, or whoever's trying to be stealthy, can I get a stealth roll, please? Okay. Uh, 17. 16. Got an eight. Oof. Three. <laughs> Double oof. Well, you could make as much noise as you want, but with the two people in front and behind you, you're covered. <laughs> Got talons clacking against stone. Okay. Um, you're sneaking along. Heading through, uh, anyone checking for traps? Or are we just walking? I will be trying to look for traps as I'm going first, but no promises. Okay, uh, can I get either an investigation or perception check? I'll do investigation, at least it's positive. Well, it doesn't matter when you roll a one. Uh, so that's a three. Everything looks perfect. <laughs> You've seen trap floors before. You've stepped on them. There's definitely no trap floors around this pathway. Perfect. I step forward with confidence in my own abilities. Silently stamping. Because you can um, you do, as you're going along for about 35, 40 feet, you do notice that there is a little alcove to off to the side of this pathway as it keeps spiraling down and heading down, most likely towards the water, is what the path's heading towards. But you do see a little alcove, and before you get there, you do hear some talking coming from there. Uh, seems to be a few people talking and the gist of the conversation is roughly um, we managed to get some of some of the rock but 
they've managed to get everything else up. So I think we're just going to have to do with what we have. Um, we'll wait for the others to get back, and then we can start like transporting all this stuff out of here at night. I stop and kind of like let the others catch up to me a bit, motioning to be quiet. Um, I just whisper to them, sounds like there's people up ahead. It sounds like they're stealing something. So we got to keep like probably at least one alive then to question, huh? Preferably, yeah. The next even, sound is, oh, go on. Do we even have to fight them? I, I take it we can't really sneak past and they sound like they'd be <laughs> open to dialogue. I can, uh, I mean, they're talking, so that, you know, is a positive at this point. Uh, I can move, I can try to approach them and talk to them and see what they say. I can chuck loose rocks, see if they, you know, freak out, draw weapons or. I mean, oh. if they're thieves, most likely that's what they're going to do. Right. That's what I would do. But if they are, <laughs> come from the same profession, maybe they'll show me some professional courtesy if I'm not trying to step in on their score here. I, I can go up with you, apparently unarmed. You know, I'm not bad at talking myself. Right. Um, just... Uh, are are you still like blinged out, noble garb, like all that right now? Yeah, yeah. I don't own yeah. anything worse than fine Just clothes. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Uh, maybe lose the lose the coat and the rings. Uh, I'm keeping the the fire resistant. But that's fine. On. Just all the other, you know, jewelry. Just stick it in your pocket or something. Velios takes off his nine other rings. <laughs> I'll keep the. I'll take the coat off. I'm going to keep my signet ring on because it's my spellcasting focus. Oh, well. That's oh, I'm actually unarmed. <laughs> yeah. Just like turn it around so like the signet is like on like on your palm side and keep your uh, hands out of sight. Um, I'll just yeah. I'll just walk in with, you know, kind of that that noble pose like my hands behind my back kind of thing. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that though. That's gonna, <laughs> that's going to be the oh, way. All right. Um, it's casual, casual. Hands casually at your side. <sighs> casually. If a hand's out of sight, it means you have a weapon. I'll just like make my posture really bad. I'm just kind of like. Hmm. Right. <laughs> Are we Looks positive great. that this is a good course of action? I think this is the best plan we've had yet. There's the chance I mean, they're not bad people and we wouldn't want to go in and just murder them. Well, in your left eye twitches when you're lying. <laughs> I'm. I'm Okay, I'm just uh, trying to hoping that maybe there might be a diplomatic uh, solution here that doesn't involve right. killing or incapacitating people. Uh, Real in quick, what's our story? So we got it straight. Uh, I'd say that we were following a, a mark through here. Somebody came to this house. We were tracking them, and uh, they went down into the cellar. Don't know anything else going on here. Do we want to say lost kid? I mean, even if, if these guys are thieves, they probably are not okay with like kids dying and stuff. Lost kid yeah. might be better because they might think they're the mark you're tracking. Maybe one of That's them fair. didn't cover their tracks well enough. Maybe it was a kidnapping job going bad. I'll just say that we were trying to nap this kid and ran into this house. So wait, now you're the kidnappers? Right, yeah. If you think that'll work. But I, I think what if... Work. But if they don't like us, story. yeah, if we come in and we're like, hey, we don't care what you're up to, we're just looking for a kid who's lost, yeah. you know. We'll start with that and see where it goes from there. You guys kind of have to, it's it's like jazz, you just kind of have to improvise based on what the other person's giving you. Let's try. Right. If either of you dies, I'm holding the other responsible. I mean... I think it's unlikely we'll die to some thieves. Again, we're all in a prophecy. If not, if Elias will just melt them with his hands again. Right, See so him do it before. They're going to hear us. Sorry. Yeah, did, did you walk back or did you wait for them to get to you? 
Uh, I waited until said, I got. I waited. We, we were whispering. We were. Yeah, you, were whispering. you may be whispering, but you also rolled a three and a something with stealth. You can you hear me? <laughs> well, I rolled it. Yeah, I rolled a decent stealth and a really bad investigation. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take one step in the three, trigger which rocked up to you. Oh, them. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because you're like, I'm gonna wait for them. It's like scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. What's going on? <laughs> and Valley was being quiet for some reason. <laughs> I guess if they were being loud, I might have backtracked a little bit to uh, talk to them. I don't know how obvious was it to me <laughs> with my perception <laughs> that they were being super oh, loud. <laughs> You'll All right. soon find well, out. Uh, you do hear either way. noise coming from the little alcove and it's the sound of a dog barking. Oh. Maybe that's Darts. Uh, darts <clears throat> well let's see go come on over there and uh go striding up hands out in the open i'm just and trying to you... mimic Folan's gait because i don't know how to walk like you peasants as you turn the corner uh the guy which is clearly the leader of all these guys He's just leaning up against the wall, looking like he's expecting you. Morning. And you notice surrounding him, there's like six to seven. And maybe a seventh. You're not sure if it's hiding behind a pole. Um, other bandits is the best word to describe them, uh, along with two hobgoblins. Morning, everyone. <clears throat> the leader's just looking at fancy seeing you here. We'll go have our break because, you know, it's around <laughs> break time and break screen. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the break screen was gone. I just needed to, story wise. Um, so. Followed and Avelios. What's happening, friend? Do I do I know you? Well, you should. I guess I have changed a bit, unlike you. I tend to age. As most people do. What's your name, friend? Uh I go by the name Firefly because I really like the show. Really should have been longer than one season. But, um, <laughs> but, I don't uh, have cable, so. You should watch it. It's really good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my real name, and he glares at all of his little underlings, and it's like, if anyone sneakers, you know you die, is Clarence. Clarence. Uh, you would remember Clarence was a young up and comer. Um, he w was with, so after Cal left, there would have been a few people still trying to stay around to keep the guild going. Uh -huh. uh, he would have been in one of the most recent iterations. Okay. Before it actually a couple like generations disbanded. down the line. Yeah. All right. He was a lot younger. He had hair. He didn't have the burns. Like he looked respectable. <laughs> now he looks Clar criminal. Clarence, little little Clarence. Yeah. I don't reckon. I barely recognize you. I haven't seen you in what must have been two, three decades. Yeah. What have you not been up to? smuggling yeah right um i went legit a little while back um got out of the game but you know recently been kind of needing the the scratch so i've been taking on some jobs here and there why are you here 
uh, actually, my uh, colleagues and I are tracking down a little boy about yay high. Came running off through here. Black hair, bit mopey looking. You recognize him? No. You're kidnapping now. Uh, you know, kidnapping's a strong word. Ransom, maybe? That's just cruel. Just cruel. Human trafficking, not cool. No, no trafficking <laughs> involved. We just, uh, we're just returning him to his parents and charging a small finder's fee. It, it's more like, a, you know, a reward. He's in these dangerous places like this. We need to get him back there, you know? And we should be rewarded for our efforts. Hmm. Looks around at his, I don't know, he's like, anyone seen this kid? Nope. Nope, no kid here. Right. Well, uh, we'll move on through then. Won't bother any of your business down here. I had a perception check from both of you. Oh, it's really oh, dumb to ask, well, Paul, and it's... He, I he mean, it's pretty through. much just... He may it's pretty through. much just up to, the, <laughs> up to the die rolls at this point. Here's my plus one. 21. 18. You both notice with his hand gestures and everything they're all generally to one side to try and keep your attention away from what is standing in front of and that's kind of to his left what's he got you see a little glint shiny bit of it looks like metal but not exactly metal could be meteorite-ish. Mm. Judging by his conversation of how they got a bit of it, but the rest of it's been removed, we'll have to. Yeah. Well, looks like you've uh, pretty busy down here, so we'll just leave you to it. Okay. You just go back up. You turn right when you leave here, okay? All right. Um, I mean, we were following so the tracks came down this There's way. There's no kids going down here, buddy. All right. I'll let uh, you walk out of here as, like, courtesy for the past history we have together, but... I appreciate your respect to your elders. <clears throat> Fair enough. Um, well, we'll head back our way then. There's a okay. uh, good seeing you, Clarence. If you're in Carthor again, uh, look me up. The last thing you see as you turn to walk away is the sound of where the dog barking is coming from. And you see there is this little, small, puppy ish size dog. That seems to have um, a collar and chain on. The collar's got arcane sigils around it, and it's in like a little carry cage thing. Okay. Um, the direction that he gave us, gave us for leaving, is that the same direction that we came from, or is he trying to get yeah. us to leave another way? Okay, cool. That's the one that you came from. Because you can see the path keeps going down, and you can see now here waves coming in and okay so the impression is that this it just lets out by the ocean or has an yeah. outlet in the ocean okay it's how they probably smuggle stuff it's just all right uh casually turn around and motion for Avelios to follow back to <laughs> the group going back around the corner <laughs> is the the dog look to be made out of shadow no no okay Uh, as I round the corner, I don't say anything, but I just like give a motion to the the other two to just like follow, so we can move further down to have a conversation about what we're gonna do next. Okay, you head back mm -hmm. towards the stairs. Don't go the whole way, but you gathered you are far enough away to not be heard. Yeah. 
making enough noise so they believe you are leaving. Mm-hmm. Just like stop, stop, stop. Maybe stomp, a little stomp, bit stomp. too much noise. Like we are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so got a bit of a problem. Ah. Okay. Found the meteor, right? That's lucky. It uh, it's currently in possession of an old colleague of mine. And? Um, he's gotten a bit big with the years. Uh, you know, seems to be running with a rough crowd now. Um, I don't imagine they'll give it up willingly. So if we're still looking for that, there might not be as much left as we initially thought. What about Leo? Didn't see Leo. They didn't seem to know who we were talking about. I am kind of curious about their dog, though. It's got some kind of magic collar on. Wait, they had a dog? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't look like it was Leo. It was like a small puppy with a magic collar. Leo said his dog looked like a puppy. It's also made of Most shadow of and time. had glowing red eyes. Well, didn't he say that his dog was a normal dog and then it got big and turned into a shadow dog? Yeah. No. Or was it always a shadow dog? It was okay. always a shadow dog. It was just small and then got very large. Ah, right. If it has some kind of magic collar, could that be changing how it looks? I mean, maybe. I, I kind of was wondering the same. So the real question is here, there was about eight of them, nine of them. Yeah, nine, because it's, what was this, six and the two hobgoblins, or seven and the two hobgoblins. Right, that we could see at least. Um, so going in guns blazing is going to be a bit of a problem. And I don't really relish the idea of going toe-to-toe with um, Clarence or Firefly or whatever he's going by now. It's a stupid name. Those are two very different names. And yes, Clarence is an unfortunate name. I can see why he would pick something different. What's wrong with Clarence? Oh, I was saying, I, I was I, saying yeah. Firefly. I was saying Firefly was the stupid name. <laughs> I think I think Clarence is, you know, that's a respectable name. I know a few Clarences. Right. It's powerful. I don't know. Either way, uh, I don't think he's going to... He didn't seem very friendly. Do you think they're? Do you think they're going to have to come back this way with the meteor? Uh, it seemed like they were loading up some boats. I mean, either they're bringing it in. I, I imagine they're going to smuggle it out the same way. But I guess it's possible that they might load it up and then bring it out through the house. Could we wait for them to leave? I mean, if they leave, they're probably leaving with the stuff. No offense, I'm more concerned about the child that was kidnapped through a portal in the meteor at this point. Fair. Uh, I mean, I don't think he's this way. I, I think we got, I mean, we got to at least try and figure out if that's Leo's dog, right? I mean, it's probably not, but... It's an awfully big coincidence. What if you went back and called the dog's name? See if it reacts. If it does, we could uh, take things from there. If not, you just... Well, I'm not sure what your cover story would be. But, uh, Can you tell right, me where I, the dog is? I could give you about where it was at. Is there a spot you can get to where you can see if it reacts to something? Uh, if you turn me invisible, I can. They're going to be looking out pretty hard now that they've seen us. I can message the dog, is what I'm saying. Wait, well, that might work. Or I can turn invisible, or if you turn me invisible again, I can walk up to it and just look at it and talk to it quietly. But I don't know if you can do that today. Mm, I can. 
the position of where the dog is located, you've kind of got to go into the room and then it's like left. So to really see it for a magic spell, you've got to be kind of in that room. So I don't have to see it. Technically. Yeah. Just have to know where it is. But then we don't know if it's reacting to anything. So. Do you want to be invisible then? I mean, I can do that. I can see if the dog reacts to the name. If it does, then we know it starts. And um, I don't know. I can try to open its cage, let it make a run for it. We all go running out together. We could <sighs> set a little bit of a, a trap. If we could get them to come running out after us, we could have a couple of people ready to go with some dragon's breath. Get some, uh, you know, area of effect stuff going on. Mm. All right. I mean, do you think that's going to be enough to stop them or they're just going to be on fire chasing you? I mean, thin them out a little bit. Yeah, I can push hopefully. them around a bit. How tough did they all look? I mean, it's a lot of them, but... I mean, it's probably a little tougher than us. We can also hide. Hmm. I have something for that, too. What if we made a noise? You hid, made them run past. We sneak in behind them, get the dog, take one of the boats, go out down into the bay. I can make a space for us to hide in. We don't want to rely on our hiding skills because they had they had like little like rafts or uh, uh like rowboats um you're not 100 percent sure because you never actually saw anything you could just hear uh, the sound of like the water and gotcha. boats hitting something well i'm going to make the assumption that they have something that they've been using to get out to the <clears throat> to the meteorite and then mm -hmm. bringing it back here so if we can lure them this way, come in behind them, grab the stuff, and escape with their uh, with their boats, then that might be the best way. Okay. I mean, so you could probably outrun them pretty easily. I mean, nothing else I could serve as the distraction and then draw them this way and then double back and zip past them or at the very least if you lure them up through the house you escape fly out towards the bay you can meet us back out there i imagine the outlet has to be pretty sizable if not we'll look for a big bird man flying through the sky <laughs> or you know meet you back at the end if everything mm -hmm. goes wrong okay do we still have the sending stones the pair that we took. We should. I think so, because we never definitively said we were giving them to Zemnian. But I'm so glad. <laughs> we'll yeah, give one so to you. One. And I'll keep the other. Now, are these ones legit sending stones, or are these magic walkie-talkies? Legit. Okay. Ben seems to have his own supply of magical ones. And just how he can like communicate with all the groups. It's his little. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shall I make us a hiding spot? That seems like a good plan. Okay. Oh, finally, I start pulling <laughs> rope off my backpack. <laughs> Got another one. Uh, I am going to cast rope trick. So if we put like the opening of rope trick, like like right up against the like the dark ceiling of the passageway we're in mm -hmm. and that's what it i was thinking be, like, it can be up to 60 feet up 60 feet of rope um it hangs perpendicular to the ground at the upper end of the rope there's an invisible entrance opening to an extra dimensional space that can be reached by climbing to the top of the rope you can pull the rope up into the space so no one can see it we can see out but nothing can see in 
the thing is not all of them are going to go. So right. we are still going to have to deal with some people probably in the cave. That that works to our advantage, right? Because if we take all of them out, if they even if they come back in and we're still there, you know, fighting them in two waves is a little easier. How long do we want to wait? Because you two could put on those necklaces and then we could all have Dragon's Breath of the team that goes in. It's a ridiculous plan. <laughs> Are you talking about twinning Dragon's Breath on you and me and then Fulton gets it? Yeah, exactly. Is it an action to cast Dragon's Breath to use Dragon's Breath, or is it a yeah. uh, hmm. action to use? But fifteen foot cone, three d six. So that's less damage than I normally do. But an AOE effect, so you can hit. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to use it. <laughs> that's true. That's just having the option. Good idea. If there's like four people <laughs> in front of me. Run in and just like ice, fire, lightning, just fire. You're all gonna get the same type, but you can yeah, well. Type, but oh, yeah. Yeah, so not fire, not acid, because we don't want to so destroy I'm, any of stuff. I'm rethinking whether or not we even need a distraction. We make attention. We're all just hiding in the hole up there. We wait for them to come underneath us, and then all four of us stick our heads out and just the murder <laughs> hole. Fire on them. <laughs> and then we duck back into the hole, and wait for them to come up, and then breathe the fire out of them. This is a dumb idea, but I want to do it. Because <laughs> we can, can we attack out from the hole? So, like, there's nothing. Yeah, no? it's uh, no, you have to actually like stick your head out the hole. Okay. Like, but spells can't we cross can't. into the space, but once you're out of the space. But there's nothing saying that I can't, like, you know, stick my hand out and shoot a couple of crossbow bolts yeah. and then, like, duck back in. Yeah, you just have to be out of the, okay. the, the entrance. So until they start like holding actions to like attack us when we poke mm -hmm. our heads out. But we'll probably have some sort of cover, I imagine, from well, the hole itself. Literally can't see into it. Well, but yeah. if they're but... like holding their action to attack your mm -hmm. hands when they come out. Which is why I still think yeah. we should try to split them up, but we'll wait out the hour for you to drop and then it's like I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Hello. <laughs> the dragon's breath only yeah, the dragon's but, breath only lasts a minute, so this would be a good like initial like surprise round. We can get on a couple of them when they come around, take them out, and then that leaves us with a lot less to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I I we can only get have, like... three people with it because twinning it gets two, and so yeah. we can't well, do the four. Yeah. Three. If it would, well, I don't think I need it. Um, but you know, as you were saying, Poland not necessarily the best plan for you so maybe yeah, well, it... i was saying it might work better as like range because i've got mm -hmm. i mean you've got your range sun bolts too yeah. so i mean we both have options um so i don't, I don't know i mean six of one half a dozen the other i don't think it makes a huge difference but yeah. it might work better for Saul to have it mm -hmm. okay You do rope trick as a ritual, or do you have to expend a spell slot? No, I have to expend a spell slot. It's not a ritual spell. Is that a first level or second level? It's a second level. Okay. I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Well, and we'd have to be, our hole in the thing would have to be 15 feet above the ground, or else the fire or whatever won't hit him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can just be up to 60, so I can put it wherever you guys want it. Because once you pull the rope up into the hole, you can't see it at all. How tall is the ceiling? 30. 30. Push for like 15 feet up. Yeah. Good jam. Um, if you go with the distraction option, the combat will probably be one of those skill check combat things. Sort of actual mm -hmm. combat. So Alex isn't just sitting there like... Doo -doo. <laughs> yeah well that's what i was thinking Anything it may not to help with it will you know 
come into effect of how efficient your combat is. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the question. Do we want to do like giving up Saul to have him like lure a couple of them out of the house, not knowing like how many are going to actually go? I think we just have our rope trick thing. We have Saul run him out and then like wait to help fight. Whoever comes to fight boom, kill them. So just run them back and then to we us go... instead of all the way out. Yeah. yeah. So we just set up, I mean, we could even set that up like up the stairs back in like the skeleton room. Um, so it's far enough away that like they can't get back up immediately. Mm -hmm. And we just home alone this and keep luring them in yeah. and bonking them on the head. That's a good idea. And then... <clears throat> oh, my salt mask crew did the whole star and sh shoot an arrow and draw someone over its end. They kept rolling real well with stealth and it worked. I'm like, they're doing it again. <laughs> Let's do I it. Have... This always works against me, it seems, because my character's just like, Let's go see what that is. I'm like, oh, idiot. <laughs> like Jerry just went into that room and hasn't returned. What's happening? <laughs> So, if we can, though, let's try not to like murder everyone. I mean, they're yeah, sure. I mean, if they try to murder us, I'm going to murder them first. Well, I mean, knock them out, and you know. Yeah. I mean, if I punch anyone, I can knock them out. Don't think I've quite figured out how to not you know, burn something to death with my son shots. But at, uh... at the very least, let's not kill Clarence. I would feel really bad about that. I like Which normally was a. What does he look like? A, a small tyke. Uh, what what race was he's he a again? Kid? He, I said I knew him from when he was a small tyke. And, you know, uh, he's a human, but his bald head, scarred on one side, burnt on the other. He's vastly different. <laughs> to everyone. He's everyone the actual character. Base, he's the one who has <laughs> details drawn. <laughs> I give a description of Clarence. I just say, just not kill him if you can. Okay. It's Firefly. <laughs> so I'll go set this then. Where do you want it? So I was thinking up in that room, maybe just like above the door as they come in, we drop down behind them in the door. Boom, boom, boom. So that way they can't just like run back out. Yeah. So a little before getting into the room itself, so that I can get into the room, have, you know, basically hold the door, and then you're maybe like 15, 20 feet behind them. So you could just, yeah. Okay. Dragon's breath them all there. Nice. Yeah. I'll take my rope, go cast a spell. So I think she like takes this like 60 feet of rope. So it takes out the rope and sort of like lays it out on the ground in some weird symbol and then lays her hands over it and then it animates um, and shoots up to the ceiling before that if we're using the amulets do you guys need to attune to the amulets oh, I don't know. do we mm -hmm. um yeah i mean do that and just see how this goes <laughs> hopefully no one has disintegrate okay <laughs> let's tell the idea that you guys traveled and left Hmm. Waiting the attunement time. Oh, yeah. How long does it take to attune? It's a short, oh, a short rest. rest. Mm -hmm. Have a short rest then. <laughs> I'm going to burn my actions or my uh, second wind before the short rest to heal myself up to full. And burn your actions so it's just for the sake of it. Like, <laughs> and for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just like I do. do a couple. I like do a couple punches in the air like Rocky Balboa. Just do one extra punch and then I'm good. Nah. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> Need to take a nap now. <laughs> okay, so Man, who is getting the yeah, who is getting the other necklace, Bolin or Saul? It's up to you guys. Uh, well, if Saul is going to be, I kind of like the idea of Saul having it because if Saul is going to be the other end of this pincer formation mm -hmm. that we are forming, then you can just get the dragon's breath coming from both sides. Yeah. Okay. This is how Ace feels on Saturdays. 
<laughs> and then yeah. Fallen will just like whoever survives right, now we're the, best friends. So whoever survives the triple cone effect of this, Fallen will pick off with a couple of yeah, so bolts. are you gonna take the yin or the yang? Just in case one of them turns out to be cursed, so we know who has which one. Oh no. So does it work both ways that like it's it's not just a one way thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I just thought maybe I should have it work both ways. One of them only reflects damage spells to the <laughs> other one, and the other one only reflects beneficial spells. Which one's the black half? I think that's Yang. technically Yang. That's the one she'll keep. Okay. All right. Good and change then I'm to gonna races. get my key right. and roll a hit dice for some health, but. Even minimum, I get full. Oh, health. I guess spells on that. I look pretty snazzy. <laughs> and I'm going to be holding my action to do Dragon's Breath until I see Saul run past. So he's fast enough. Hopefully, we'll have a round in between. Yeah. And then we'll all be ready to go. <laughs> How many people are going to run past? I get a second level spell slot back too. Uh -huh. um, nice. Once we attune to the necklaces, are there any other hidden things to them? I identified them. It should be fine. They seem fine. Just making sure. They're not burning your skin or your feathers. Um, they do disintegrate your bag of teeth. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everything seems sweet. Great. You're a new best friend. Okay. When you just get within 10 feet of each other, you just get repelled back 30. <laughs> and the reflect only has a range of 10 feet. So you Magnets, can never how do it. they work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You rope trick. Your rest. You push your rope trick. So, uh, this after the stairs through the secret door rope trick up there so it's in yes. like the big barracks room i think that's the rope trick is back down i was thinking the rope trick just inside the door yeah so that yeah. when they come so into the room we can drop down behind them just inside the door which leads back down so you can prevent yeah. them from going back okay yes mm -hmm. okie dokie uh, so I guess I'm going to need a description of what you're trying to do to get people to follow you. You do know he doesn't like being called Clarence. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think what. I think Saul is just gonna, you know, very. Methodically, you know, talons clacking, quarterstaff thumping down the hallway, and just Clarence, come out and play. Yes, that's a thought which I had in my mind too. Because <laughs> Thursday, um, you hear something going? Who's saying my movie. name? <laughs> Clarence, just not responding to that, just Clarence, come out and play. I'm going to destroy whoever that is. And you just hear him say, you guys go find out what it is and bring him back to me alive. <laughs> and you hear, <sighs> they pick up their weapons. <laughs> running off and you just hear footsteps and armor and all that coming towards you all right i will head back towards the uh towards the trap uh not flying because i don't want to get too far ahead of them but even on my feet so i can still move 35 feet around i'm looking behind you you can you keep it so if they have any ranged attacks, they can never get a clear shot of you because it is slightly curved. So you can always see that first person every so often, but you're always just around the corner in case he's trying to take a shot. 
Can I tell um, how many of them I've pulled? Right now, no, because it's all curved. Like you can see at mm -hmm. least two. Um, but unless you're going to stop and wait to see and possibly give them a chance to get a shot off at you if there is any ranged attacks. Not going to do that yet. Uh, so you run up the stairs. Secret door is probably wedged open, I believe, so you can easily just go through. Um, the three of you up top, looking down, you see Sol run past. Is this when you cast your spell, I Valios? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sol, you, uh, what? I'm going to go with, uh, I think, cold is the least dangerous to any of us. The least dangerous one to everyone's fire. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to set the building on fire either. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, just run through, so you feel your chest kind of cool down a bit. And it's kind of like, do you know, um, you've had like a really strong mint. Mm -hmm. That feeling on your breath as you run. <laughs> I, I, so I just pictured bird with teeth chewing gum for some reason. <laughs> And it's not cool because there's the beak outside and then there's just human teeth inside. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Um, Saul gets the room, turns around, starts doing, you know, staff tricks, uh, but is holding an action to cast Dragon's Breath after the others have cast theirs. And then everyone else from above, you see five people move in. Dude, he calls him Clarence. Come yeah. out and play. He sent yeah. two hobgoblins, three <laughs> bandits. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> hey, on three. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> you just jump down. I'm assuming you all jump down, or do you just take turns sticking your head? <laughs> Yeah, I guess we want to make sure we can get all five. So yeah, jump yeah. down behind him. <laughs> Bolin's gonna stay up there for right now because I got some sick moves planned for shooting out of this thing. Curiosity ends the spell. <laughs> 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 oh, featherfall! <laughs> uh, I'll, if Avelios is gonna jump down, then I'll stay up there. Okay. We can trade off. Okay. <laughs> It first. is like three feet wide, so. Oh, huh. three foot by five foot. Yeah. Oh, so I mean, if we can get them all with just sticking our heads out, but we want to make sure they don't run away too. Yeah. I think <laughs> breathe, and then I'm gonna drop down because I don't want to get caught in a cold breast. Okay. Hey. Okay. Uh, done, I believe. Yeah, my DC is 15. I rolled 5d20. The highest I rolled was a 7. <laughs> These guys are all dead. <laughs> Excuse me, d20? What are you doing? Especially when I roll two sixes. What's it? What am I rolling? What's the damage? 3d6. 3D6. Okay. Boy. I rolled 13. I also got 13. Hell yeah. I, I got 12. <laughs> oh no. So, 38 cold damage <laughs> to each of them. Avelius, you're the last one to blow breath because you're like, I just don't want to be hit by any of this. So I'm going to make sure they blow. By the time you blow your breath, they're all dead. They're just frozen statues, <laughs> and then you just make like a little blizzard snowflakes fall down over the side mass. The comedy's at what? Fallen's just still sitting in the thing there. He's like, did it work? Look. It's like a wind. Oh, little shit. Wonderland. Old Elsa over here just. <laughs> it's. Let's, uh, let's run back and kill the rest of them real fast just before a bunch the of... dragon's breath wears off. I feel so There's powerful. Like frozen bodies, <laughs> just like f fractured yeah. like uh, limbs and stuff. All of all. <laughs> just... Maybe. I think they're mm -hmm. dead. <laughs> well, you know. 
Mr. Freeze with his gun, <laughs> like old Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is there more us? Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that means that means one of you is a Batman with the nipple suit. It's so good. It's me. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so you just wiped out. Okay, hop go. Go, go so go. Yep. Oh, we'll briefly amazing. let you know. Go, you know, gonna fly past the alcove to cut off their retreat that way, and then you guys all come in behind. Okay. All right. <laughs> And as Saul is flying down the hallway, just whacking his quarterstaff against the sides to make an echo, and just Clarence, come out and play. Listen, if people didn't think this house was haunted before, so well, it's got to be haunted after all the people we killed. The water and the boats. Yeah, I mean, flying past the alcove, probably not going too far. Well, I mean, I don't know how much further the corridor goes past the alcove. Uh, you got like another 35 40 feet before you get to like okay. so yeah probably zip past there see what i can see and then decide if i know how far back i need to go to close them off also, am i gonna get uh proficiency in performance after this <laughs> this has been a spectacle we may have some roles um <laughs> You hear Clarence just start swearing words which should not be said live on stream. <laughs> um, and he's just going, you two, you got to do what the other failed to do. And he sends the last two people off towards you, so The other three. We you were... turn the corner right. and you see yeah. two other people leave and start running off to where Saul was. So it's just Clarence. <laughs> and you look into the alcove and there's just Clarence and he is like red. There's veins are bulging. He's furious. Hi, Clarence. <sighs> so <clears throat> maybe we it's got off on the wrong foot. Fire for <laughs> <laughs> listen no one else needs to die here why don't you just take a deep breath sit down call your men back we'll talk about this clarence come out and play Dude, just... he's not gonna stop a second he He's going to cast a spell because of that. He was willing to just <laughs> be like, I'm outnumbered. Okay, next second. Clarence like, fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah, I figured that might screw our chances for diplomacy, but <laughs> makes sense for him to keep doing that. And, oh, okay. Um, just because he... Does not like you anymore, Fallen. He's gonna hold up his hands and he does. Um, what's it called? Why am I drawing a blank on this spell, everyone? Uh, he shoots fire from his hands. It's like level one spell. What is it? Burning hands? That's the one. <laughs> and he's like, my name's. Firefly, and he does that at level two. Yeah. Because, fuck you. Uh, can I get a deck save from the three of you? Okay. You may be able to breathe eyes, but he can shoot fire. <laughs> uh, 17. 15. Uh, five. <laughs> okay, what is this? You all succeed. Okay. Oh, no, two of you succeed, so it's what half damage. Um, and I take half of whatever it is. So does and her so resistance does transfer through? <laughs> okay, it's, so I rolled all this the This is dice. the experiment, the salt take damage. <laughs> the total 
total damage. So, Avelios, you take 19. I'll take uh, 9. Because of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay. I also take 9. You also take 9. Uh, you take 4. Curiosity. And so, you take 19. Unless you're resistant to fire. Oh, no. Mm, nope. Okay. He doesn't even get the save. <laughs> Uh, no, he'll he'll get the save. Um, you'll take nine because she succeeded on the save. Okay. okay. She dodged most of it. <laughs> I see. So it's whatever you get hit with before your natural resistances. Yikes. It's like and so bond. if you were both in there, you would take the other lot. Mm -hmm. It was double up. Ooh. So we're not allowed to stand near each other ever again. Nope. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> I forgot you had some like if Fallen and Curiosity have it like they were initially planning, this is gonna work. We both would have taken I would have taken nineteen points of or yeah. Yeah, eighteen points of fire damage there. Ooh, yeah. You're lucky no. you're lucky they made the save. <laughs> yeah. If we both were in there, we both failed, we took like thirty eight something. I'd be yeah. out. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's got its benefits, but it's also dangerous. It's like warding bond. Jeez. Yeah. <sighs> Clarence, you didn't have to do that. And I shoot him. Is that what you're using your turn as? <laughs> and I shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> do we roll for initiative or are we uh, just going to go now that Clarence is gone? You can just go. Clarence is gone. I was tempted to like cast banishment on like curiosity just to get rid of two of you. It's just like, oh, fuck off. I mean, he's probably. I guess both of you are gonna do your shit. I don't know if I just wait for you guys to do your cold shit first. Well, we had said we wanted to take him alive. That's true. Are you guys holding back, or do I do I see the two of you? You got two magic users who can't non-lethally kill someone. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> it's I, up to you to not, uh, you, could, you could let them to try and weaken him, but they may kill him. Well, I can rub I'm, him. I'm breathing cold on him. He hit me with fire. I'm, I'm petty and vindictive. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well, here's uh, hoping the one cold probably. spell doesn't kill him. <laughs> I'll wait. Thank you. He fails that save. <laughs> Seventeen, two sixes and a five. He's still up. Jesus. <laughs> All right, I rolled a, I rolled a twenty-four and a fifteen. Yep, they both hit. Okay, I'm going for his legs. I'm not. I'm not trying to kill him. Oh my god. Uh, the total damage is nineteen. Okay, he's still up. I action search. He's looking rough. <laughs> so I got one more shot. That's a 17. That hits. And I'm just going to go ahead and burn one of my arcane shots. The grappling. That's magical damage. <laughs> I'm shooting him. <laughs> this magical damage, is it just like, po is magical damage like arsenic? It's just going to murder him. <laughs> Um, we'll no, see. it should uh, be fine. Okay. Well, I, I'm just <laughs> doing this to restrain him in case he still gets another turn. Um, that's a lot. Uh, 16. Yeah, that's he's damage. down. Uh, he okay. had nine left. <laughs> okay. So that was maybe a little over. He's just like fully wrapped up and he's like, I... <laughs> just screaming, it's Firefly. That's all he's <laughs> What are the other two doing? Um, Getting cold breathed. <laughs> okay, cold breath. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, these guys, they only rolled 11. Uh oh. What is with this? Oh, this oh. game hates me. That's 15 cold damage. You know, two more popsicles. <laughs> I think Saul feels just a little bit bad, but it's also like, these guys were going to try and hurt us. 
Clarence was can't... challenge rating five wizard guys, and you just. <laughs> I can't believe we just murdered all of these people. I can. <laughs> so it was a great plan. Uh, we did a like, good this job. This is going to be a good fight. They're going to put the necklace on. I'm going to do that. Right. Next thing, like, we're going to draw people. It's like, okay. <laughs> hey, he let us go. <laughs> that I don't was think, Clarence's mistake. I don't think Curiosity is even, like, interested in what's going on anymore. She's, like, wandered over toward, like, where the meteorite is. <laughs> it's, like, looking at it. Yeah. I make sure Clarence is okay and bound uh yeah. even if it's muffled all you can see is he's just saying it's firefly i'm so sorry clarence <laughs> i know i know we're just... just gonna take a few things off your hands and uh we'll let you go Bolin, just call the boy firefly but he's always been little Clarence. It's, 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 the boy. He's not anymore. Like he's had right now. Right. Just call him You're right. Boy. You know he's what? He's not anymore. He's had an extremely <laughs> bad day. Call You're him right. what he wants to be called. All right. You've put up a good. You, that was that was a hell of a spell you just cast. Good on your Firefly. We'll we'll be gone in a pot. And he's knocked out. Like his last <laughs> bit of adrenaline. <laughs> I won. <laughs> but he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> sleep, sleep. He's not. Uh, I'll go over and check. Also, he's not in danger of dying. Like he's not going to no, bleed out or anything. No, he just used like the last of his energy was just to stress his name's Firefly. And then when he finally got called that, he's like relaxed and the adrenaline stopped cursing through his veins, and he's just I'm gonna go to sleep now. <laughs> it's cold. I've been shot a few times. I'm tied up. <laughs> Saul comes back in. We've got two icicles down that way. Excellent. You say you guys aren't bad. You've just wiped out so many people. You said they were bandits. <laughs> I'm neutral. Bandits also neutral. Too. Chaotic. Yeah, chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> chaotic good, but chaotic. Yeah. The same as Finn. Why are you hating on him? <laughs> because Saul doesn't lie to us. You never... Okay. Um, meteorite. There's hmm. a decent sized chunk of a meteorite here. Well, here we are. I suppose this is ours now. Right. Looking around Hi. for the dog. <laughs> uh... The dog did not get hit by the burning hands because I am not an asshole. Um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> not an asshole. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> good, no, good for you, Barry. <laughs> Looks directly into camera. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone out there. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, um, the dog, no one thinks that about you. They only say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to know about the dog? What were you doing to the dog, Avalius? I was just looking for him. Make sure he's still, still yeah, here. He's still in his little corner in his little cage. All right. Try and call him. Try calling darts. No reaction. You guys, I don't think it starts. I'm going to let him out of the cage. We know what we knew before. I think it's a nature or survival or an arcana check from people. From people? Who are looking at the dog. Sure. Six. 15 survival or animal handling? Um, okay, so 15 survival. Mm -hmm. It's my it's the best one of those. <laughs> survival. Uh, 11 survival. I can do Arcana if you guys want. Yeah. Twenty-five. Okay. And Colin, were you looking at the dog, or were you just... Uh, I was looking. I rolled a six, nature. 
It's got four legs and it barks. What do you mean <laughs> yeah. it's not dogs? <laughs> it is a living dog. <laughs> I don't even know if it's living, but it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get it? Hello. Um, you would have read about these dogs, Curiosity. Uh, this is a little puppy version of a blink dog. <gasps> the collar is preventing it from doing its blinking ability. Oh, look at you. Can all dogs blink? No, some only wink. They're the ones with only one eye. <laughs> Look at you. Such a magical creature. I do have an image somewhere I will put on Discord for everyone. It's the cutest little puppy. It's a what? It's a cute little puppy. It's, not, it's saved somewhere on my computer. I'll put it in Discord for you all. Uh... An incredibly magical little creature. More All magical right. than you? Well, no, not entirely. Uh, this is a blink dog. They blink in and out. The collar is keeping him from moving between. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Cute. Does he have a tag oh. on him? As an owner, does he have a tag? Does he have a dive tag? No, he does not. Oh. You've gathered this is being smuggled to sell to some rich person. No, we can't have that. You have Elios's family being like, "Hey, let's get a bleak dog. I'll contact my friends." Can I keep him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I was. Like not. It's also a good offer. I know a thing or two about animals. We can train them together. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, little one. Once again, Savannah ends up with a pet. And Every a time! <laughs> His paws are like two times too big for him. He's got like <gasps> the big floppy paws, the floppy ears. It's just. Come here, little one. Uh, you would know that blink dogs are natural enemies of displacer bees. He's mine. And I imagine oh, if we boy. ever see Rana again, they won't get along very well, but perhaps you'll be nice to the kitty. A little yip. I mean, I can't imagine we're ever going to see Rana again. It's a big world. That would be mm. quite a coincidence. It seemed as Next though Rana was imagining you would. <laughs> <laughs> she just happens to be walking through these caves. <laughs> hey guys, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, it seemed very much as though Rana wanted to see you again. But <clears throat> right, <clears throat> so we should only probably a... get going with the meteorite. Right? Yeah. Uh, when I flew down the corridor, did I see you know rowboats waiting there? Or... Yeah, there's a little rowboat. Um, the conversation which you heard at the start, following you mentioned they were waiting for night time to mm -hmm. move the star. It's probably getting late afternoonish. With the short rest happening and the time you spent inside this house, we should probably also wait till night to, you know, move the stuff like they were planning to. Because uh, otherwise, if we get seen by the guard, they're going to think we're the ones that pilfered this and it's going to lead to some awkward mm -hmm. uh, conversations about the people we just murdered. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I guess, is it illegal to try and get the meteorite? You'd gather the meteorite wasn't the issue. It's the whole smuggling of animals. And if they're smuggling, they're probably waiting to go out to a larger ship, so there may be more mm. people coming at night. Oh, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> that's how you kind of work back in Carathor. Okay. I was you got the main lot like... which which traveled between towns. So if we just leave back out the front of the manor, I mean, how big is a meteorite piece? Is this something where we need to like put it on a boat in order to transport it? No, or you can, can fit we... it in a bag. Okay. They only got a bit of it. Uh, the main part of it got salvaged. Okay. They were going back for so more, I... and they saw they were getting up the bulk of it. So we stick the meteorite in a bag and you walk the dog out on a leash. I think we should be fine. I mean, I'll be forgetting something. Right, the kid. 
I mean, these people didn't seem involved in that at all. Just holding a puff. <laughs> I don't know where we, should, we can search the rest of the house, see if there might be something else going on here. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, probably we should. But also, I think that, you know, we just got a, we got a solid lead on this dude. You know, we can, if he wanted to kill the, if he wanted to kill Leo, I think he would have. It seems like there might be something bigger going on here than just, you know, the house, though. Like, if we've all seen this person before. I haven't seen him. Well, if most of us have seen this person before, then... They're pretty well integrated. Mm-hmm. Well, then it sounds like you know, we need to meet up with Kiernan, Ken, whatever his name is. Uh, Edge Dad. Edge Dad. Meet mm-hmm. up with him tonight because he's at our inn. And then, you know, hurry on back to Carathor. Karnan. I had to look. Karnan. What's his name? I knew I it was a K. You got it. I just call him Edge Dad. <laughs> Or K's and R's and N's, it just forgot the vowels. Nah, you got it. Right. Yeah, we have what he, what he needs now, so no reason to stay around here. Doing anything with uh, Firefly? Oh, yes, what are we doing with him? I just look at him, and I mean, I think we should let him live. <laughs> it feels a bit, you know, setting a bunch of people in the heat of the moment and uh, turning them to you know, ice cubes is one thing, but murdering a man while he sleeps is a bit different. Uh, so, I think just leave him. So we're going to leave him tied up or let him wake up unbound? Uh, we'll tie him up. We just need to be out of here before nightfall. I mean, he's going to be looking for me, but he was probably not the only one at this point, so... Could move him somewhere else, maybe. Or, well, no. If we leave him in the house, something in there is probably going to kill him. Uh, I think we're good to leave him here. Let's just tie him up a bit. You got a bit of extra rope. There's rope lying around. Like, there's. Let's also do some proper <laughs> looting of the. Their room. What other stuff do they have? Or was it just meteorite and just a puppy? No, I was waiting to be like, if they don't loot it, they don't loot it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I also around. pat him down too as I'm tying him up. Okay, um, you find a pipe on Clarence, a little smoking pipe. That's uh, not good fancy. for you, Clarence. Um, Smoking's bad. I take that from him. There is a like perfectly crafted set of loaded gaming dice mm-hmm. um i'll take those also just bad for kids to have there are five bolts of silk they're worth 50 gold each and there's eight casts of brandy so i'm almost like oh that's mine but i'm not playing simon <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know about trying to take all the casks of brandy out of here. Just get them on the rowboats, and we're not trying to smuggle them, right? No one will stop us. Fair. I mean, we tie them to the horses then, and then ride back to Carathor with them? You know, maybe just unload them at the end. Maybe they want some brandy. You shouldn't take many, but we could take some. All right. I'm just sitting on the ground trying to come up with a name for the dog. I'd suggest Eclipse. Oh. He is. That's actually a pretty good name. Yeah. Considering the picture I have somewhere, I think that matches quite well. That's good. Call you Eclipse. It's quite good. All right. I take the I take the pipe. And the gaming dice off of uh, Firefly. <laughs> In his sleep, he twitches happily. <laughs> I also leave. I'm gonna leave a note on him. 
I just take a second to scratch. Uh, and it just says, uh, it, it just says, oh, you won. And then uh, I think Folan probably has, I will decide like at some point what it is, but I think from back in his Thieves Guild days, he probably has like a symbol or something that he, for his handle. And assigns every note, Black Parade. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um Yeah. So you leave by the rowboat. <laughs> you rock up to one of the docks in town. Um they were just looking at you weirdly like a rowboat rocks up to a dock there's all these other big ships and you guys are just um, <laughs> if it's the strongest person rowing that means it's curiosity it's me. rowing and the three of you guys are just <laughs> My fellow is like, do i have to Whoa. roll <laughs> no okay. um, i'm just gonna stick with Saul is probably holding on to Eclipse and petting him while she's Oh yeah, he took a little like length of rope and like tied it off around his collar so he's got a little leash. I'll get you a nice one. And I'll just roll in the boat. (laughs) How cool do I look? (laughs) Well, it's it's got two or a signal and both at once. Yeah, I can do it this way. (laughs) But this doesn't look as cool though. You know what meant to look it's a canoe. Cool. It's, you're meant I meant to be... me. <laughs> the town's meant to judge the three guys who are just sitting there watching. <laughs> the three very scrawny looking gentlemen. I mean, I've got a positive strength. <laughs> the only person who looks natural in this is Avelios. <laughs> Saul has his hands full with a puppy. So <laughs> it's Jess Fullen who looks like a dick. <laughs> Everyone fit, like when you when you when you get up to the dock, like the actual sailors there are like, Do you need help, miss? You know, like just death staring the three of the guys. <laughs> what? She offered. That's right, sexist of all of you for saying that she shouldn't be the one rowing the boat. I'm sorry, are you fighting my battles for me all of a sudden? No, they were staring at me. It's my battle. <laughs> Don't look, Eclipse Mommy and Daddy are fighting. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. That's cool. Um, do you need help unloading any of this stuff? I think we have it from here, thank you. I mean, do we? I wouldn't mind some help, personally. These... One of these guys is like wider than the three of you guys standing <laughs> next to each other. I suppose, if you don't mind. <laughs> They get everything out. They offer assistance for curiosity getting out the boat. The three of you can get out yourselves. Um. <laughs> I, was, I was assuming I was out first and didn't bother <laughs> trying to help anyone else out. <laughs> Should I tip them? You almost tipped the boat getting out of Valios. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, I give them some money. Not needed, man. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, you're back in town. There does seem to be a lot of cheering going on as like some big like trawler ship coming in, and you can see the meteorite. Everyone's cheering. Yeah. Well, seems like they've got the meteorite. Good for them. So go back, so the booze, and then uh, pick up Cardin. Get the mm. hell out of town. I suppose. Are you staying? Sounds good night? to me. I don't like the idea of staying the night here. You might want to leave. Okay. So you go back to. Oh, what did I call this one? Fisherman's Wharf. Okay, Fisherman's Wall. I was just looking for it. <laughs> I didn't remember it from last week. Uh, 
so you go there um you look around you see Carnan sitting in the corner he's looking quite sad just nursing her yeah Carnan look up oh hey hey guys how's it going pop They wouldn't give me any of the media right after I helped them design and build the contraption that got it out of the thing. Well, that's awful. That's right, the fair of them. Well, we might have something to cheer you up. You panini maker? Better. Though I suppose we don't know what would happen if you made a panini maker out of this. Clover would be out of this world. Just open the bag just a little bit. You, you stole some? No, no. Oh, re man. Re I'm... Reclined it, really. Yeah, a guy named Firefly stole it, and we stole it from him. <laughs> the infamous Firefly? He's been causing troubles around this part for a while. Rumor really? has it. Firefly's not his real name. It's not. You don't yeah, it's, say. It's Clarence. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and we get out of the scene before. Somebody put a muzzle me, on him. Clarence, that's... At the very least, he does that's not like being Firefly. called Clarence. <laughs> it is better than Firefly. Also, we made a new friend. Yeah? It's a puppy. <gasps> oh, I... Um, tell me that's not for the Paninis. No! Good, good. I'm just making sure because that looks pretty tough. Um, have you heard the other rumor? No. Apparently, there is a traitor in the Kingsguard. A traitor? Yeah. Apparently... This trader turned up saying that they rescued the princess from being kidnapped, but the princess has never left town. And there's two of them now. Someone tried pretending to be the princess. Will we ever catch a break? Now. Well, now you really yeah. can't date him. What do you mean, date him? Oh. Nothing. Wait, wait, wait. Does this mean we don't have a pardon? Probably. That could make going back to Carathor to save Leo a little trickier. Oh dear. But yeah, the traitorous king's guard managed to escape. They don't know how. And the fake princess went with them. So there's a big bounty reward on those two. But if the princess is just fine. The princess was never kidnapped. We need to get this out of town. King's Guard turns about up this. with a fake princess. Right. We we'll go. talk about this on the road, Cardin. Um, we should probably get out of earshot. Immediately. Okay. Downs his beer because he's got meteorite. So let's try and sell this brandy cheaply to the inn. Are we keeping yeah. any of it? It looks nice. Oh, you have brandy. Got a few casks. Good. We can probably you know, tether one to one of the horses. And you, um, Karin will ask for the brand, which you can easily just tell him. I don't know. Brand. Oh. E. He's like, it's brand E. Brand. Oh uh, yes, the E brand. Um, <laughs> e brand brand. I wouldn't try selling it here. <coughs> Why not? Because Firefly stole it from here. Oh. Ooh. We should just take it. You can kind of give it well, back, but I don't think you'd get money for it. <laughs> well, we'll just we'll, we'll bring what we can carry with us, and then we'll just you know leave the rest where it can be found. You have Conan with you. You can carry all of it. <laughs> I just meant like on the <laughs> horses. <laughs> well, Conan probably has a whole wagon with his stuff. Should we? Leave? Oh, true. Does he have like a, he had a wagon? Well, should we leave some of it? I mean, it is theirs. Nah, they've got plenty. We're opening up an inn. We need all the brandy we can get. <laughs> You know, fair enough. Um, I would like to ask one favor from the four of you. 
When mm -hmm. you decide what you want made from that meteorite, can I please work on it? I'd Absolutely. have to, you know, fight your son and his friend for it, but... Well, we got it for Carney, and I think it's only fair. Yeah, my son wouldn't trust anyone what to else to work with, with it, Bob. Yes. Did you want a panini maker out of it, or...? I think we can think a little it's, bit more. If there's any yeah. left over, I'll make sure there is. <laughs> like, whatever he makes is just a little He's bit smaller. Than it should be. It's good enough. <laughs> make the plates of the panini maker out of meteorite. <laughs> that would be amazing. Those paninis give you plus one to saving throws. <laughs> Also made you a set of die. Here's a twenty-sided die. Some people play some game cards. I love games. Oh. Dungeons and Dragons. Have you ever heard of that game? Mm -mm. Can we have a quick conversation about the princess when we get out of time here? Before yeah. we yeah. this, just so we're all on the same page here. Yeah, we we, we still got like twelve minutes. Because once we're out, we say, uh, Paul would say. So the princess, the, the real princess, is the fake princess, right? Somebody stepped in. Is that what we're all thinking? What? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The princess. So we rescued we the real princess. Definitely. I think Rama is the real way. princess. Yeah. Whoever's in Carathor is an imposter. That has to be. Because we spoke with them. I mean, either that was a very convincing performance or... I mean, it's not impossible, but... It's also not likely. Do we think that the gesture, the right name, I can't look up right now because Ulari. Of Ulari. Uh, do we think that they, maybe they pulled one over on us? Maybe getting the princess out of Carathor just to set up this imposter? That seems very elaborate, but for someone that wears a jester outfit. But well, then. Mean... Yeah, isn't that what justice do? They play tricks. But that means the two Kingsguard were in on it the whole time just to, what, mess with us? And yeah, then... I'm not following why Rana would do this. I don't think Rana... I think they thought they were doing the right thing. They were sort of set up like a... You know, as a fall, as a fall guy for all of this. So do you think he fall. knows he has the real princess? I think so. Oh, and you would know that Rowan, the head of the King's Guard, who was there, he is as straight as they come. Like, there's no mm -hmm. corruption with that guy. So, yeah, which is why I hate him. The <laughs> yeah, corrupt ones are the ones you could work with. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you think and he didn't good know? At it too. So you think Rowan think... didn't know, and Rana figured it out and took the real princess to safety somewhere? I doubt either. Yeah, I. I... Both of them, as much as I despise them, both of them are stand-up people. So they probably had nothing to do with this. Well, they do now, regardless. We need to find them and uh, make sure they're safe. They have the real princess. And then we need to figure out how to expose this other one as an imposter. Otherwise, we're not getting our pardon and we're not getting our guilt. And I mean, we gotta go to Carathor anyways to find Leo. Yeah. We should call Finn, see if they've shown up in Treevale. The princess right. seems to know him, seems to trust him. They were close enough to there. Mm -hmm. And if not, maybe Finn might be able to give us the lead on where they're currently at. If they escaped Carathor, they, if they're in the wind, we have to have some sort of lead. I'll call him. Is this one of those little... You're on speakerphone here, Finn. <laughs> Hello, Finn. We're all here. Oh, hey, guys. And it still sounds busier than last time. And he's like, just... I've got to talk really quietly. That's fine. That gnome guy's trying to find me. He's got a prosthetic <laughs> sample. <laughs> we figured that might happen. Um, have you heard any news from, from Rana or Rowan or the Kingsguard? Um, I haven't been to check where my mail goes because it's under constant surveillance. Okay, but why? But 
by the gnome. That gnome wants to oh. <laughs> Hold on, I'll see you, and you'll, and you'll hear the door crack open, and he'll be like, Servant boy, you go grab the mail from my they desk. They have names. Uh, if you speak to your friend Ivalios, you'll know that they probably don't have names. They're his servants. <laughs> Just because Ivalios doesn't know someone's name doesn't mean they don't have one. Yeah, I mean, I always assumed they had names. I didn't know for sure, but it seemed like it'd be weird if they didn't. They're not telling me their names because they're like, we don't need a name, sir. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not proper. You don't need to know about them. It's their work life separate from their Okay, you're life. done for right now. <laughs> the um, servant has no name. <laughs> please check. It, it's very, And you haven't seen them. You haven't seen Rana or the princess... No, and he's like, oh, just a second. And he's like, oh, there's one from Rowan here. And he's like, oh, reading it, and he's like, oh, sh shit. <laughs> um, so we're not pardoned. No, we know. Oh, well, we're why are you asking me if I've heard, if you know already? Why didn't because you tell we me need this? additional information, Finn. There's a, there's a princess imposter. Plus, could you not have figured out that we knew about it because we were asking you if you knew about it? You told me we need to be honest to each other and you're keeping secrets from me. This we just found out. Critical. That's why we're calling you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does um, he say anything else? Um, Rowan told the princess and Rana to run. Um, is keeping up with the charade that the fake princess, the imposter is the real one so he can stay in his position to try and protect people apparently the king's real ill and nobody's seen him for a while um do you have any idea just where hit the fan do you have any idea where they would have gone i can reach out and try and find out uh rowan does say that they won't be coming back here because this is probably being watched uh -huh. Shit. We're still wanted criminals now, so I don't know if we should go back there yet either. Uh, maybe you should come back here first and we can discuss next course of action. Because I believe I did receive word from Zemnian that he's due back any day. <laughs> and he has some information. Um, and then there is two rooms full of prophecies that apparently had guidelines to what type of prophecies so this isn't even all of them excellent it's just the table of <laughs> contents the index no it's just any prophecy that's associated to groups of four people and a bow oh excellent that's narrowed down quite a bit not when you see how did... many prophecies there, there are. There's like I... 300. At what point did prophecies stop being useful when there's like a million of them? When have prophecies ever been useful? And why do you care no. about them so much? I don't care about them, but apparently right now in our situation, I have to. So I... right. I'm an academic. I do the research that's warranted. There's still the oh, question, sorry. though, of Leo is maybe in Carathor. Are we heading back to Free Pale Verse, or are we trying to find him in the middle of a city where we're wanted criminals. I think we I have to go back can... home. Yeah, I, I think, think regroup first. As much as I call? want to find Leo, we're just... That's yeah. not our priority right now. He's one boy. This is a princess of an entire nation. It's also our freedom. Folan said it right. If they wanted to kill him outright, they would have. Yeah. Uh, you would know with Leo, especially magic users, that he was above strong for a sorcerer. The fact that this creature, which was only meant to be called very briefly, was with him permanently. And only being 10 and being able to do what he can do, he had a lot of power. So yeah. they probably want to keep him alive. <laughs> and it raises the question could we beat whatever can capture him if he's better than us <laughs> mm -hmm. his real name's anakin and he was made from the force Little uh, Annie. 
What's his uh, metachlorian levels? Uh, off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll find 100% him. Hundred percent chance. I, I think we have to find Rana first. I think so too. Edge dad's just suddenly gone. I'm. I've got work. I got booked at my shop. <laughs> and we've got a meteorite for you. Uh, yeah, you, you, you like to let me know what you want. I'll make it and I'll deliver it when it's done. Home again, home again. And do you leave the meteorite with Ed's dad? Or do you take it with you? Uh, I think we'd leave I, it with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just let me know what you want or let Finn yeah. know he can just message me um, good luck you seem to have a lot on your plate I don't envy you one bit we'll see you soon and he's just waving like a big jolly old man waving at you and he toddles so we off still have several his... miles left to get to, to Emberwell <laughs> It's so awkward. They have to walk next to each other. <laughs> oh, you oh, parked no, over I'm here? I'm assuming this is like you got there. Like, <clears throat> unless you're planning on doing anything on your road trip back, it'll be like fast forward to there. It's like, bye oh, guys. Bye. So, okay. Is the dog fully grown by the time we get back? <laughs> Eclipse. <laughs> how many weeks pass? Come on, how fast these dogs age? Sit. I don't know how fast they age. It's it's close to a week's travel to get back. Like time is progressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you get back, you see a lot of the buildings are almost done now. Um, the inn's looking amazing. The blacksmith's done completely. Um, the little temple for whatever cleric you're getting, all that's waiting is like whatever symbol needs to go up on top. And there are people everywhere, but Avella, she would recognize the outfit of everyone as your servants. And they're just like transporting the rock and stone and cleaning up the place. The garden's looking immaculate now. It's looking like a really nice town. So Velios's parents did not want him living in Squabble. <laughs> and they have a teleportation circle in their house, hence <laughs> let's just deliver everything this way. I think we shall call it there. You <laughs> lost a kid, gained a dog. Um, meteorite, princess, missing again. I mean, <laughs> kid for pardoned. dog seems like a fair trade to me. I'm just, just saying. <laughs> uh, you're not pardoned yet. Um, which means we can commit more crimes, guys. The murders are going to be pardoned once we get there. It's only crimes that we commit in Carathor. Yeah, Ooh, but we got to go back guys. to Carathor. <laughs> we take all the bodies back to Carathor, then we've got immunity. Just catapult the men and be like, man, they died on impact. <laughs> uh. Can't prove it otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, you find Finn hiding in a little secret hiding hole. He hears your voice and he's like, I'm in here. And it leads down to the little room which he mentioned, which has the four pedestals and the danger room, which you probably shouldn't be in if you don't want to activate stuff with your rings. I so badly and want to just put my hand on it. <laughs> put that temptation out there. Um also down there would be Zemnian and Ashran. This is where they're studying away from everyone because it's kind of potential end of the world shit. Oh, hi. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. If you're done, Barry, I'll bring us out. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's always me just sitting here like, uh, is there anything? Uh, all right, thanks everyone for uh, watching, and thank you, Barry, for running this game. Uh, always got to be just the biggest fucking twist at the end of every session to leave us 
sitting here agonizing for the next week. Uh, I love it. So we will be back next Tuesday, same time, same place to continue our adventure and see what happens. Um, in the meantime, check out our next stream, which will be on Thursday at uh, eight o'clock Eastern. We're going to be playing uh, Elegant Suffering, a good society tale, a uh, bunch of Regency era, uh, just weirdos trying to do their things it's at it, we're we're going to be telling an awesome story it's worth tuning in for uh, we've done a lot of legwork for it and uh, if you missed our session zero um i would definitely tune in for that so you can or, uh, check that out before uh next session because it is uh really good it's gonna be a lot of fun um but that's gonna be this thursday at eight o'clock otherwise schedule is normal saturday we'll have saturday nights at three uh, it's fifth edition D D sport ball uh sunday we will have slang 101 at four o'clock eastern that is uh, savannah's game uh monster of the week uh college students fighting vampires uh naked uh and which you know that's not like every session it's just like next session specifically but it could be every session. We'll see if it if we get a good turnout for that. Uh, anyway, so we will be, uh, that's going to be our schedule. You can check out all of the rest of our games uh, below. Um, there, we have all the recordings and all of our past broadcasts on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to us there. You follow us on uh, Twitter. Uh, of course, follow us here on Twitch or subscribe if you're feeling up to it. Um, and then join us on Discord. That's where we do most of our talking and interacting. Uh, there's a link just below all of us. You can click that, come right into our Discord server, and uh, hang out with us. It's just a big old family. GGK folk. Um, I think that's it. Oh, uh, Friday. Encounter Roleplay. Um, so won't be streamed here, but we'll probably host it. Uh, Savannah is going to be running a brand new Masks campaign. It's going to be a six week run every Friday at three o'clock Eastern time. Uh, as I said, Savannah's running it. I'm going to be playing in it. LB from Slang 101 is also going to be playing in it, uh, who was formerly a guest here on this show, if you've seen that episode. Um, and yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, anything else that I missed? No? No? Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, for Barry, for running this. And until next time, good game and good night, Internet. Good night, Internet.